thanks for downloading this episode of the Resilient Advisor Podcast. My name is Jay Coulter, and on this episode, we are going to explore the future of fintech with the CEO of Robust Wealth, Mike Kearns. Mike is a CFA charter holder and previously oversaw about $40 billion in assets at Franklin Templeton. Mike, thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me, Jay. Hey, fintech is an exciting topic. The changes are coming fast and furious. Let's talk about, as we're recording this at the end of 2018, from your perspective, what's been some, what have been some of the key themes in fintech this past year? Yep, so, so um, I think it's an exciting time to be a financial advisor. You, you've went the last couple of years, the focus has been on operational efficiency right? Tech, all the fintech and wealth management has been, how can we make the advisor more operationally efficient? Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's been a ton of progress across the industry. And that's exciting if you're a financial advisor, because you're not going to spend time uh, opening accounts and paperwork with your clients. Um, what I'm super excited about is, you know, what's coming in the future. And, uh, and I look forward to getting there. But the, the 2018, 2017, 16, has all been about operational efficiency at the for the advisor. So account opening, CRM, process systems. What are some of your favorite tools that you've seen advisors try and adopt over the past year? Yeah, the, the biggest one is um, around model management and automated rebalancing. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, you know, 10 years ago, you had to go make a custom account, you know, a custom program for each client, or you had to go manually trade all the clients. Um, you know, today in this day and age, advisors can create models that are still customized to each client, but the computer is doing the customization and they don't have to do the rebalancing by hand. And that saves them a lot of time. On the account opening end, um, I mean, e-signatures, it sounds crazy saying it, but they're finally here uh, where you can open accounts with e-signatures and open them really fast. Companies like Apex, um, Apex Clearing, they let you open accounts in three minutes or less. So same deal as going to buy a car. You should be able to get a loan and drive the car away the same day. When you go to open an account, it should be instant. And mm -hmm. that saves your not in good orders. That saves following up with clients. So really nice story for operational efficiency for advisors. Do you think the ACAP process is going to be sped up with some of these technologies? It, it needs to be. The, the ACAP process is insane to me. Um, you know, moving money is so difficult. So we, we've spent a lot of time at Robust Wealth trying to optimize how we move money from bank accounts. We have a long way to go on the ACATS process. I think the industry as a whole, um, you know, there's still requirements sometimes where you have to get a medallion signature, which is, you know, I, and that's just, that's crazy, right? In this day and age, that you need a medallion signature to go transfer an account. Yep, so that's I, right. I think in the next couple of years, there's going to be a lot of progress on, on ACATS. We can... As a, as a country, we can launch rockets and land them on ships, right? Elon Musk does that. We can build all some electric cars, but we can't transfer financial assets from one broker-dealer to another in, in less than you know, 20 days. So look at services like Venmo and PayPal to a lesser degree. I can send money all over with Venmo instantly. And to, the, to your point, the fact that we can't transfer assets from one broker-dealer to another – from one custodian to another quickly it is a real disservice to the clients. I, it's too funny. I used PayPal as an example um, recently, and I sent all employee emails out, and uh, we were talking about an engineering type culture, which uh, re it refers to the culture at the whole company. And the first statement I made was PayPal is worth more than Goldman Sachs. And why are they worth more than Goldman Sachs? Because they make transactions so dang easy, right? Mm -hmm. And in, um, in financial services, and PayPal is in financial services, but in wealth management financial services, it's really hard to do transactions fast. And, um, and that needs to change, right? That's part of that operational efficiency story for advisors mm -hmm. that will continue on in the future. Well, let's, let's shift gears and look to the future. What, what do you see, and you, you spoke about it briefly at the beginning, the future of fintech, in your opinion, is going to focus more on the client experience. What do you mean? What does that look like? So, 
you know, there's still ways to go on the operational side, but we've made a lot of progress, right, for financial advisors. So what's coming in 2019, 2020, 2021? Well, well, customers, right, are demanding a better experience themselves. Why are they demanding that? Well, they're used to PayPal, right? It's really easy to send money. They're used to Amazon. I mean, I order something on Amazon and it's delivered the next day and they take a picture of it, right? It's just really easy. Well, when a customer goes to log in to financial advisors' websites lots of times, it's, okay, log into my you know, um, financial planning app, log into your portfolio app to view your portfolio here, log in somewhere else um, to, to sign your document on DocuSign. It's a really hacked up experience. And I think the future, this is where Robust Wealth's focused, and all of our competitors are or should be focused, is on the customer experience. How do you make it integrated? How do you make it pleasant? How do you make it Amazon-like? So what does that look like? Let's walk through the whole process. I'm a new client to an advisor. I've got a million-dollar portfolio, some life insurance, a 401k, and a couple different bank accounts. And I come to you, Mike, as the advisor, and I say, Mike, I'm on board with your planning process, your investment strategy. Sign me up. What's my experience? So um, the, the big focus for us is making that experience integrated. So you create a financial plan, you do goal-based investing, but then you step right into it where you can now, you call it buy it, um, which means open an account and move the money. And then you manage it to the plan in real time. It's not one system for planning, it's not one system for investing. Um, then we do all the rebalancing and then we do all the performance reporting as well. So we, we have the, um, the three P's coming out where it's planning, preparedness, personal P&L, a.k.a. budgeting. Um, and then the idea is that you make it one customer experience. So as a customer plans, prepares for life events, and manages their budget, um, they can also open accounts. They can see what's happening in their accounts. They can move money. And I think that's what customers expect. And so I challenge all financial advisors to go look at their customer experience and say, how would Amazon do this, right? How would PayPal do this? And that's where they need to get to. And us as financial software companies in the industry, we need to innovate to get there as well because we're not there right now. I love that question. How would Amazon do it? Because Amazon is going to do it. <laughs> you got to beat them to the punch and start delivering that experience. Uh, so that this is the type of software that your firm delivers for financial advisors. What does that look like, and what would advisors experience if they were leveraging your software on their end? Yeah, so, so we have some really neat features on the investment side that are um, coming out. They're in beta right now, but they're coming out broadly pretty soon. And I think they focus both on the advisor's ability to deliver um, investment value and the customer's ability to uh, have improved tax loss harvesting and more customized portfolios. Um, the biggest thing is on, we call it customized direct indexing. So, you know, customers, the, the end customer, the client, um, they have social preferences. And I'm not saying uh, SRI, I'm not saying ESG, I'm saying social preferences. Some customers might, might want to overweight uh, you know, gun stocks or tobacco stocks. Some might want to underweight them. So what we're incorporating in our platform is advisors can add a direct index, U.S. large cap tracking index, into their portfolio. And then we can ask the customers questions and customize that portfolio to their social preferences. And it's done in a really... Uh, interactive way with sliders. I think that's on the investment front, one of the, the um, kind of one of the future points, right? Getting away from ETFs, mutual funds, it's how do I get direct security exposure for my customers, but in a index like way. So your next ETF and it's customized too, which is really neat to the customer's tax situation and needs. So Mike, let's go a little bit deeper on that. You're talking about owning a basket of individual stocks. And then they are weighted based upon an index with slight rule revisions at the customer's discretion, client's discretion. 
I mean, I think we should hire you after that. You just framed it way better than I did, Jay. Well, <laughs> the problem is I'm an engineering background, so I always take stuff too complicated, but I love your summary. Yeah, it's basic, it's, it's just a custom, it's a basket of stocks that tracks U.S. equities. The customer answers a few questions, and the advisor can turn control everything along the way if they want to. But the customer um, puts their preferences in, and then we tilt it and say, okay, this customer does not want to own alcohol or tobacco. We take that out for that customer's basket. This customer wants to overweight women on the board. So we overweight companies that have um, uh, 50% or more women on their board. Everybody has different preferences, but I think in the future, social preferences are really important to people, especially with social media. And if you look to Europe, Europe has a ton of assets in uh, ESG and SRI. And the U.S., it's a, it's a major trend. Um, we just don't have the products all in place yet, and we don't have enough advisors talking about it. But I think it's a really neat differentiator for an advisor. And then so do the advisors use this software and then have it tie into their custodian? And I'm just trying to think about this operationally for the advisors. So you're an independent advisor. Someone signs up for your service. You have a client that has a bias and say they want – you know, an overweight exposure to small cap value. They want an overweight exposure to, they want an underweight exposure to technology stocks. They then leverage that software to go and trade at the custodian. And then the soft, does the software do the trading for them? We do all the trading for them. So we create the custom portfolio. So we have a team of clients that writes a lot of great code that says, okay, I want to track U.S. equities but I also want to overweight technology. We create that portfolio for the customer and we can do this for a $5,000 account. And then we go and we have direct connections with um, two custodians. Uh, we're launching this feature on Apex Clearing. And the reason we're doing that is we can do fractional shares. So we create a portfolio called there's 300 securities. We have all the securities we need to go buy for this $5,000 account. Then we go and buy them in fractions with uh, the custodian. And the next day we reconcile the trades to make sure that they all went through okay. We hold them in a fractional account. Um, if they're fractional shares, we hold them in a, a regular brokerage account if it's a whole share. And the customer has that exposure. Now, the really neat part is the next day we go look at that for tax loss harvesting opportunities if you have tax loss harvesting on. And so every day we're evaluating tax loss harvesting opportunities um, every day we're looking at the uh, cost to trade, and we're also looking at the drift. So let's go a little deeper on the cost to trade. If your custodian does not have asset-based pricing, I mean, that's going to get really expensive. Yeah, so we, we, we kind of limit, um, we limit people that can use this to, right now, it will only be on Apex Clearing, and that's for that there's two reasons for that it's our ability to trade um at like institutional pricing on apex is the first uh the second reason is the fractional shares right you can't implement a 300 stock portfolio even in a hundred thousand dollar account really easily unless you have fractional shares so we we have this great feature um but we're limiting the custodians that we work with we're not going to go we've made a statement that we're not going to integrate with every custodian because we can't work with all their their um, you know, old systems and software, we're only going to integrate with the FinTech Forward custodians and um, we're only going to turn this feature on when trading costs are what we deem reasonable, which is institutional at one to two cents a share. Got it. Got it. How could listeners find out more about this particular piece of software? And then as a follow-up, what are the pricing points for it? Yep. So um, they can go to robustwealth.com and uh, that's our website, R-O-B-U-S-T-W-E-A-L-T-H.com. Uh, we have a ton of great information there. You can um, schedule a demo and get a demo of the software from our sales team. Uh, the pricing varies. Um, it's different for a 5 or $10 million advisor than it is for a, a big bank that might be using us. Um, but it generally ranges from uh, 10 to 20 basis points and um, it generally includes the trading cost in that price. So it's a wrap fee. Uh, that said, it really depends on um, the type of book of business and the size of the customer. Got it. Mike, this but is... The sales uh, team, if, they send us, if you send us an email, we'll get you the exact pricing for your, 
for your uh, customer base as well as um, the, you know, the size as, as an advisory business. Well, Mike, this is definitely something different in the marketplace. I wish you guys the best of luck as you go out and grow your company and serve financial advisors. If people wanted to learn a little bit more about your company, is there a place they could go besides your website? Yeah, what, website's the best one because we have a blog too. It's blog.robustwealth.com. That's a really neat one because you can see all of our articles, but you can also um, check out really cool videos that we've made over the last two years, and they're fun and goofy videos too, so we have a lot of fun with them. Um, and then you also can go check us out on LinkedIn. Just you know, uh, go to LinkedIn and type in Robust Wealth, and you can see uh, all of our followers and some of our postings. Excellent. It also looks like you can be found on Twitter and Facebook at Robust Wealth. Mike, thanks so much for coming on and sharing your story. Thank you, Jay. It was a pleasure.